I'd add the Smart Haddad here again. So uh, we have now to start uh, configuring the initial configuration on uh, the router, on the Juniper router. So as you can see here, we have a lab of eight points. Let's start directly with the first point. Point number one, put a uh, root password for uh, Juniper, which is one, two, three, then commit. So what I've done now already, my router is uh, already having the uh, default configuration on it. So there is no any configuration. That means that the root doesn't have a password. All right, so how can we do that? We have to go to the system, edit system, and uh, then uh, we go from here and we have to say set root authentication. And if we make question mark, so we can use the plain text. There is also possible the encrypted password. If you want to load the key file, also if you want to use SSH, so you can use those two different protocols for SSH. So let's use this one, the plain password. So we make the plain text password, Juniper123, Juniper123. And now we do commit. So after we do commit, we have to check if uh, we log out and then we try to log in again to the router, we have to check if we can use the uh, root with the password Juniper123 if it's working. So this way you are putting a password for the root. So remember, every time you load the, the default configuration on the router, then the root doesn't have a password. And also in case you have, for example, a new uh, Juniper router, then also the root doesn't have a password. So let's go out. And uh, then we are here, we try now root, and then Juniper123. So here we go, we are now on the shell mode, so that means we can get connected to the router using the root with the password Juniper123. Point number one is done. Point number two, enable SSH version 2 and Telnet service. So those two services, we need to enable them on Juno's device, then we have to try to log in using these two protocols. So the SSH and Telnet are services that uh, we can enable them on uh, the Genus device to be able to connect remotely to the uh, Juniper device. All right, so let's check first if uh, those are already enabled because in some routers they have it already enabled. So let's go to the CLI and now edit. We say here show system services and enter. So you can see that SSH is enabled, but Telnet is not enabled. But anyway, even if SSH is enabled, I want to make it version two. Because on uh, the uh, Juniper, you can have version one and version two. The newer Juniper devices, they only have the SSH version two. So how to do that? Let's have a look. So let's go to edit system and then services. So we go to here. Now we say as set SSH question mark. And uh, let's have a look. Now we can see protocol version. You see that? Protocol version makes for us the version that we want. But I would like to show you some more things here. For example, what can you do? You can maybe say here root login. That means configure root access via SSH. You can uh, use here the maximum uh, session per connection. So how much you will have a maximum number of session per a single SSH connection. You can limit that. You can limit the connection, maximum number of allowed SSH, how many can do SSH to the router. All right, so those things you can do it uh, over here. Now we have to work with uh, this one, which is the protocol version. So we have to say here protocol version. And now you can see we have version one and we have version two. You can enable both if you want. But I would like to put version 2 because that's what it's requested from us. And uh, that's it. So now this is done. Now the other thing to do is to enable Telnet because we have seen, if we say here, show. So we see that SSH is there. It has already the protocol version 2, but Telnet is not configured. So I want to configure also Telnet now. If you really are on the production network, I would advise to not use Telnet because Telnet it's unencrypted, it's plain text. Everything you do on the command line, it will be sent clear text to the router. While SSH, it is encrypted, so that is more secure. But just for the lab, I want to show you how you can enable also Telnet. So here we have to say set Telnet question mark. 
And you can see we don't have too much of options, so we can use telnet rate limit, we can do the, con the connection limit, and uh, the possible completion is here to say enter. So set telnet, and then here I will say enter. Now if I say show, we can see that uh, the SSH is enabled on version 2 and telnet is also enabled. Let's commit the configuration. So we say commit. And now, once we are done, now I have to go to uh, Putty. So uh, I'm connecting now my router. So this is my Juniper router. I'm connecting my router via a cable on uh, this port to my computer. That is my computer. It has an IP of 192.168.1.2. This one has 192.168.1.1. All right. And if you want, we can just check if I go to my command line, if I make ping to 192.168.1.1, you can see I have a reply. So it's very important that we have reachability to the router to be able to do SSH and telnet. So let's try now to check if it's working. Let's try to do SSH, all right? So we do SSH, we go to putty. And I will go from here to the IP 192.168.1.1, SSH, root Gini per one two three and here we go so i am able to do ssh to the router point number two is done point number three we have to change the router host name to r1 so let's go to here clear everything let's go to the top now and we have to change the host name so we can say edit system and then we say set host name and we make it r1 now if I say commit, because if we don't commit, then we don't see the change that's happening. So once we say commit, we will see in a moment that it is going to have the host name as R1. So here we go. You can see that it has the host name as R1. Point number three is done. Point number four, provide a domain name for the router as junos.local. So domain name, in case uh, you uh, want that your router to be included in a domain, so you can provide it a domain name. But it's not something that uh, it's practical that you always have to do it. But just to show you this is what is required for the exam. So how you can change the domain name on the router. So how to do that? We have to go to edit. And then we have to go to system. We are already there actually. So now we have to say set question mark. So we can see all the comment. And the one that I want is the one which is domain name. So set domain name. And then we have to put the domain name. So they said to make it the genos.local. Then that's it. So we can have here an enter. So now the domain name is set. And we say here show. We can see this is showing up somewhere over here. So we can see it over here, domain name genos.local. Point number four is done. Point number five, now we need to change the DNS for the router. We want to make it a.a.a.8 .a 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 and 1.1.1.1. By default, the Genos device has a DNS already set on it. So if you look now, if we, we are on the system, let's say show. So you can see this one, the name server, it has already those IP addresses set on the Juniper router. All right. But now we want to change that. So what is the DNS? DNS is to, to make the mapping from domain name to IP address. So that means that if you try to make ping to google.com from your router, if you are connected to the internet, then you can have reachability to google.com. You don't have to put the IP address of google.com web server. All right. So how to do that? It's already one on the system. We have to say set name server now. We just say name server and question mark. So you can see we already have two. Those two are already there. But I said we put a.a.a.8. So if I say a.a.a.8, do you think it will replace or not? Let's have a look. So we make now show name server. You see that Juniper doesn't replace those ones. It will only add it next to it. All right. So in this case, what you can do, you can maybe delete those ones yourself. So what you can do here, you can do, uh, in this case, uh, set or delete name server, and then you take 208.67.220.220. .220. 
So once you say delete, and now if I say show name server, you see that this has been deleted. So this one, which was here, has been deleted. Now, if we want to replace this one, so we still have this one. But let's say that I don't want to delete it, I want to replace it. So I don't want to delete that one and put 1.1.1.1 in place of it. So I just want to replace it. So we go up to this level. Now I have to say edit name server. So we go to the name server on this uh, configuration hierarchy level. And now I can do, if I do show, you see that we have 208.67.222.222. So I can say rename. And then I can say 208, this IP, this IP which is uh, the DNS. So I want to rename it to, and then I put the IP 1.1.1.1. So I'm renaming this IP to this IP. Now if I say show, we can see that it has taken place. All right, so you have two options. Or you delete it and then you create the IP that you want, or you just uh, replace it uh, using the uh, rename. Now if I say commit, then we have the configuration saved to the active configuration. Point number five is done. Point number six, provide a time zone for the router. So the router should have a time zone, especially if you have uh, some syslogging and you want uh, that all the syslogs to be showing for you. So once something happened to the router, you want to see the exact uh, time uh, for uh, this. So how you can do that? You can use the time zone. All right, so now if we go to the router, let's clear everything and let's go one level up so we can say up. Now from here we have to say set time zone and question mark. So you will see that you have different uh, time zones. Depending on which country you are, you can choose yours. In my case, I am in the Netherlands, so we have to see Europe. So let's go down. So you see you have really plenty of uh, countries. So that is Europe. So I I'm in Europe and uh, Amsterdam. So this is the one I want to check. If your country is not listed there, so what you can do, you can look for the GMT. So if your country is GMT plus one, plus two, minus one, minus two. So you can just make GMT with, with the value of uh, the time of your country. All right. So in my case, it is Europe. It is capital. So Europe. and then Amsterdam, and then enter. So that's it, now I do commit again. Point number six is not, point number seven, provide a login ban banner for users to, when they log in into the router. So what does it mean here? Once you log into the router, you want to provide a, a banner. So that means you say for the one who is logging to the router that uh, did this uh, router for the company, for example, ABC. If you are not authorized to log into the router, please log out now. Or all the logging are monitors or something, just you put a message. So how to do that? We have to go again, we are on the system. Here we have to say set login. And now for my question mark, we have the message, you see it? This one, so system login message. So set login message. And now you can write the message. So just say this, this is, um, or let's do something else. So uh, welcome if you are an unauthorized user, please log out immediately yeah so something like this enter now let's commit so we commit uh, this login now what i need to do i have to log out from the router completely and then uh, we'll see if uh, we try to log in if we will get this uh, login message and that's very important very, very practical that you make a login message uh, for your router so then uh, anyone who's trying to log into the router get uh, this message so let's go to the top here, then exit, exit, exit. And here we go. You see, when we try to log in, it say, welcome. If you are an authorized user, please log out immediately. Very good. So this is working. Point number seven is done. Point number eight, make the command line idle timeout. So it's here should be timeout to be 10 minutes. So what does it mean here? Let's say that we are working on the router and uh, then uh, we uh, had uh, someone talking to us and uh, we are on uh, the uh, level which is uh, uh, configuration mode so let's go to the configuration mode 
and I made show, I'm checking something on the configuration mode, then someone maybe came and uh, I'm talking to him, then there is another guy who is sitting behind me and he's looking what configuration I have there. So I'm talking to this guy for maybe one hour and everything is show showing up over here. So what you can do instead, so once uh, the command line is not being used, you can set for it a, a idle timeout. So once uh, the command line is not used, then uh, it will log out uh, automatically. All right, so how you can do that? Actually, we have to go to the operational mode. So we go up and then over here, I have to say set CLI question mark. And this is what you need to do here, the idle timeout. So set maximum idle time before login session end. So idle timeout, and then question mark. So you have a possibility from zero to one zero zero, so 100,000 minutes. So if you just say zero, that means it will never be uh, logging out. So you will always uh, stay uh, on the, the page without logging out. But uh, let's do it something like uh, maybe uh, one minute. All right, so we make it one minute. And now you can see that the either timeout is one minute. So let's not touch the uh, command line here. We cannot save it because we are on the operational mode. So you don't have to save it. You cannot have do the commit. So let's wait for the one minute to finish. And then we will see if this will take me out from the uh, command line. So here you can see one minute is finished. And then you see here warning session will be closed in 10 seconds if there is no activity. So it's not yet finished. Now it's finished. So you can see. Idle timeout exceeded, closing session. All right, so that's what is the idle timeout. Let me go, and you can see you go to the shell mode. So let's go up and then let me remove it. So I will say here again, set CLI, idle timeout, I'll make it zero. So now idle timeout is disabled. Point number eight is done. And with this point, I have showed you the initial configuration on the uh, Junos device. So those are very important things to know. Also for the exam, you will get asked for those things. So I hope that this lecture was informative for you and I will see you in the upcoming lecture.